Hey guys, it's May May, and today we're making Christmas projects that could be last minute or very thoughtful gifts. They don't have to be last minute. Look at these cool monogrammed items. I'm going to walk you through um, creating a monogram on Cricut Design Space, and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to heat press these on using my hair straightening iron instead of pulling out my heat press or my iron. So I hope you enjoy these projects, and let's get into the video. So I've opened Cricut Design Space, I've signed in, and the first thing I'm going to do is insert a shape. I typically always do this, and I'm going to pick a square. I just work in squares, and this is kind of the canvas for the project I'm going to be doing. What I do when I pick this square is I size it to how much space I have on the project where I'm going to be ironing on my glitter vinyl. So on this square, I've unlocked the proportions. That means when I drag this little guy or when I put in new dimensions here, they will change independently and it won't stay a square. If I want it to be a rectangle, it'll be a rectangle, which I do. I want it to be four inches wide and I want it to be about three and a half inches tall. So 3.5 there. So now I know this is how much space I have to work with putting my monogram or the size I need my monogram to be. Now, another thing I like to do is I don't like to work with this gray square, so I'm going to head to layers. I'm going to click on that tiny gray square, and I'm going to change it to white because I like for my canvas to be white. Okay, now we need to insert some text. So I'm going to go to add text, and th these initials that I'm using are J. So I'm going to put in a capital J all by itself, add another text, and it is C, and I'll add that one all by itself. And then I'm going to add another text, and it is capital M all by itself. So each one of these are now independent letters so I can do anything I want with them. Now if this is your first time coming into Design Space and you don't know what font you want it to be, you might want to play around a little bit and just pick a good font. I happen to know which one I want. I'm going to go click on the J here and then go to Edit and see where it says Cricut Alphabet? That's the font that is the default so we see that one first. Well I'm going to click this little drop down arrow beside it and look at all these fonts that are going to populate for me. A lot of fonts okay some of these are my own fonts from my own computer and some of these are fonts that are in my access program and some of them are fonts that I can purchase well I happen to love this one called Elizabeth that is in my access access is the subscription for design space and I use that I love it I have it every month so I'm gonna click on Elizabeth and when I do look how pretty that J becomes it's gorgeous now I'm gonna click on the C and do the same thing now, just so you know, you could change these all at one time if you typed them out together, but I find typing them separately lets me move them around wherever I want them super easy. So change this one to Elizabeth as well. What a pretty font, right? I didn't have to upload a font. I didn't have to purchase a font. I didn't have to go find one. Cricut did it for me, and I love it. So what I'm going to do here is this C is her last name. I'm going to take the C and put it in the center of the box and stretch it. And I want to see just how big I need to get it to fill up this space. Now, one thing, I haven't unlocked the proportions. Therefore, the C is getting wider and taller at the same time. But look what happens. It takes up my entire box, and I don't have room for my other initials. So I'm going to unlock the box again, and now I can change height and width separately. I'm going to bring my C in a little bit. And we'll put it back in the center of that spot and kind of see what I'm working with. And I'm okay with that. I think that looks good. Now what I'm going to do, because I want to stay in the center with this C, I'm going to keep the C selected, hold down the shift button on my keyboard, and then click the canvas or the little square I created behind it. That selects both of those items. Now I'm going to go to the top where it says align. I'm going to align this C center horizontally. I love this. These little pictures help you cheat. I love it. Center horizontally. Now I know that the center of this letter is in the center of this box. That center of the letter, you can see it is that little crosshair right there in the middle. So you might think, this doesn't feel very centered, but that's because the letter is centered from this point. I'm going to leave it like that for now, and if I decide I want to adjust it, I can do that. Got to put the J where it goes, so let's grab the J, bring it over. Again, I'm going to unlock the proportions because I want to be able to go tall and wide separately. I don't want them to change at the same time. 
and I like how that looks. See how cute that is right next to it? And it's kind of attached here. Don't think your monograms have to be separated from each other. You can attach them like that and it'll be beautiful when they're finished. Although you can separate them. That's totally preference. All right, let's bring this M over. Let's unlock it. Let's stretch it out to size. I'm going to bring it in a little bit more and see how much more I can get out of it. And that feels about the same as this one. Now, one thing I do think is this C still feels a little off-center. Even though I know it's centered on my in my eye, it feels off-center. So I'm going to send it back using the arrows on my keypad, just maybe one or two clicks. See, to me, that feels more centered just by eye. I'm going to take my J and move it out a little bit using those arrows. Just a little bit. Still trying to stay inside that canvas. And then this M, I'm going to send it out just a little bit as well. Not much, just a little bit. Now notice how I'm hanging off the edge just a little bit. That's going to be fine. Where I'm putting this, I really have a little more room for width. But I wanted to have a guideline for how big to make it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that canvas and delete it because I don't need that anymore. And there's my monogram. Now I want to group these guys together. So I'm going to highlight all of them. But notice I did not get the C. I didn't go big enough. So let me just go up here and click select all. If, if everything on your mat you want to select, you can use this button and get all of them at one time without having to click and drag anything. All right. I want to make sure these guys stay together. I can either group them or I can attach them. I think I'm going to attach them together. Then I know they are all together. The other cool thing about this is once I've built this monogram, I can save it as this person's name. And then no matter what size project I want to use it on, I've got it. And I can just adjust it to fit the project. All right, so I need to cut this out a couple times. One place I'm going to use it, I need it to be this size. I'm making two other gifts for this young lady, and I need it to be a little smaller on those. So I'm going to go get my dimensions, and I'm going to resize it and put all of them on one canvas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this monogram and paste it, and I'm going to resize it. I'm going to bring it over here. I'm going to edit it. Right now it's at 4.18 by 4.16. I'm going to change this to be 5.5. I have a big old space where I can use this. And now I know this is exactly right for my next piece, which, by the way, is a scarf. Then I need another one. I'm going to paste another one. I'm going to move it down, and I'm going to resize it to fit. And I need it to be 1.75 tall. And that's going to be perfect because of where it's going, about two inches wide. I can, again, unlock this and make this exactly how wide I want it. If I want it to spread out a little bit, I think I will. I think I'll go something like that. And then one other place I'm going to use this is on a little gift bag. And I'm pretty sure I can use this same size again, so I may just tell it to cut two of those. So I'm just going to copy it and paste it. I've already done that anyway, so I can just paste it there. So now I have a monogram for her bag, a monogram for her scarf, a monogram for her headband, and a monogram for her makeup bag. Won't this be a cute gift? Not a monogram, but an initial. So now we can say go. Now, because all of these are going to be done with the same glitter vinyl, this is perfectly fine for me to do them like this, but I need to move them around on the mat a little bit. That's a little bit tight for me, and some people don't like the way I do my glitter vinyl because I'm kind of wasteful, to be honest. You could get super close and not have to waste that, but I like to be super careful, so this is why I do it this way. I'm going to move this away again, and this way I'll know I have plenty of room on my vinyl. Now, one thing. We want this to iron down so that we can read it just like it looks. But because it's an iron-on, we need to flip it so that it looks correct on the screen or on our piece. And I forgot to do that before I moved it. So do that first. Mirror it and then put them where you want them on the mat. So this is ready for me to load my glitter vinyl onto the mat. One tip I want to give you when you're loading your vinyl on the mat, the iron-on glitter vinyl you want to put the ugly side up because that's the glue and make sure the pretty side is down on the mat so i set my cricut to iron-on plus which is one notch above iron-on i feel like i get a really good cut with that and i want to remind you also that i have shown how to do this in video so many times 
So I'm not going to video the Cricut cutting. Um, if you want to see that, I'll link a bunch of Cricut videos below my playlist or something like that so you can check out all those. And I'm going to go ahead and cut it and then we'll put it onto the projects. So now it's time to weed all these items. And these guys can be a little tough to weed, especially these fancy monograms. So if you're not into weeding these fancy, fancy letters, you might want to think about using a more simple uh, letter for your project. I don't love weeding these guys, but the, the bigger they are, the easier they are. The little tiny one I had to weed for the headband, that one was really hard. So I've been weeding these for a while because I have so many of them to do. But you just take away the parts you don't want to have on the finished project. I also suggest that you have a computer or the, you know, the picture of your monogram somewhere close so you can kind of look and see, wait, does this piece go? Does this piece stay? It really does help when you can look at something for reference. So I just kind of take my time. I know it looks like I'm not, but I'm just gently doing this. I'm not trying to peel this off super fast. And I can see right there that I lifted something up that shouldn't have. So I'm going to lay that back down. I'm going to hold on to it here at the top and try that again. And now it's back where it should be. You just have to pay attention and take your time. I feel like I lifted something up there that I shouldn't have. Nope, we're okay. Just check, check, and recheck. I promise the more time you take here going slow, making sure you're getting it right, the less frustration because it's very frustrating to weed something and damage the image and have to go back and cut it again and waste the product and also take the time away from making the fun part. So like here, I like to take my little pokey tool and hold it in place if I see something that's lifting with me and then go back to pulling all the other out. There we go. Alright, that seems to be sticking good. I've also got a big gold one to weed and I think I'll save that to show you guys too. The tiny ones are just too hard for you to see on screen. By the time I get my hand in the way, you can't really see me doing it, but this is literally how it works. Just tiny and it's so, it gets so much harder when you have these intricate designs. Another tip, make sure you look in these thin letters where the little swirlies are. I have so many times I have ironed these down and did not take the center out of these little swirly letters because it can look like there's nothing there, but you really want to check and make sure. And here's a good example. Let me show you. It looks like I'm done, but I can tell right there that that is too thick. I need to go back and look at that. And sure enough, there's a little piece that has to come out of there and I would have totally ironed that down and it would have driven me insane. All right, so now I have everything done and you just want to go and look and make sure all of it's out of there. So that one's ready to go. Now I'm going to do another gold one just like that one. I want to answer this question while I'm doing this. I had somebody ask me if I put this plastic on or is this, does it come with it? The glitter vinyl that I love to use, that I use for most of my iron-on projects, comes with this already attached. All your iron-on products are going to be attached to a transfer piece for you. You don't have to put those on a transfer paper like you do your uh, vinyl pieces. Those are a little bit different, but the iron-on products are all going to have that um, transfer on them for you. And it is super sticky on the glitter one because it has to hold that glitter down. So it is super sticky and you really have to kind of play with it to get it off of your fingers here and there. I will also tell you that if you're doing the same monogram over and over, it gets easy because you remember what pieces have to come out where. That one's beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? I just love her monogram. I don't know if you guys can see all of this, but this is the backpack I chose. Look how cute this little backpack is. It has a little magnet clasp here, and look at that little dainty top. This looks like a young lady to me, and it was only $18.88 at Walmart, but look at this big old pocket right here. It's just asking to be monogrammed, isn't it? So <laughs> We're going to do that. Now, if you remember the other day, I showed you monogramming 
with your straightening iron and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my straightening iron so I don't have to put this on a heat press because it's dimensional and I don't have to put my iron to it. I'm going to use a straightening iron. So I'm going to lay this a little straight like this. I took the stuffing out of here but not out of here. By the way, I apologize for my broke fingernail. It was either stop and fix my nails or keep crafting. And clearly I chose keep crafting, so here we go. So there's that. And then this is the monogram I want to put on here. I want this beautiful gold uh, monogram on the front of this bag. So I'm just gonna see where I want it. I don't want it too low on the bag because I feel like as she fills it up, that may start to be the part that sits down. So I want it kind of high to the zipper there. And I'm just kind of eyeballing it again. I'll stretch this out and see if this feels like the middle. And that does feel like the middle to me. But don't forget to put some fabric over this as you do it. And I'm actually going to take some scrap fabric. I'm going to lay it over and I'm going to tuck it down into that pocket so that my hot my heat tool does not mess it up. So let me do this. I'm going to tuck it first. Then I'm going to lift this back. Make sure this is where I want it to be. So now I've got it where I want it. I'm going to pull this fabric back over it. And then once I get it stuck down in one spot, this will be much easier. So I'm going to pick this up and I'm just going to seal this down with the heat tool for just a second or two. All right, let's see what we're looking like. Okay, I need to get a little further down here and a little further out to the edges. I kind of thought that, but I wanted to double check. So I'm going to put this back inside and this time I'm going to go all the way to the bottom and hold that down. And then all the way to the side to try to get that EM really good. And then all the way over to get that J really good. Now, if you're concerned that it's going to shift around on you when you start to do this, you can pin this down. That won't be a problem. You can just pin your uh, plastic part down into place and then it won't move around on you. I think I got better, but it needs a little bit more. So I'm going to go back at it. Again, I take my time. I'd rather spend the time here than messing the project up. Now, I've peeled off the plastic, but I still feel like I have some that's not quite adhered down. So I'm going to go back and give it some heat again. Now, for gift giving, I'm going to put the stuffing back in it because I think it'll help that to look pretty. And check that out. We have now monogrammed this adorable backpack using our straightening iron. I think that straightening iron is going to change the game for me because I love using it and it works just as good as the iron. It does take me a little longer, but I can get into places that my iron or my heat um, press make it harder for me to get to. So I'm going to sit this aside. One thing I'm going to do is let this cool and then I'm going to come back and check all these little places because it's still a little warm. I just want to make sure all the edges are down really nice, but look how cute that is now. I love it. I think she'll like it too. So there's one. Now let's do the next. Now this is a $5 fleece scarf from Walmart and it's fleece and I wasn't sure about doing fleece but I read online and some people have been doing low pile fleece and I feel like this is a very low pile. I kind of tested it, looked at it, I feel good about this so we're going to attempt this and if I do it and I mess up you know not to try it okay. So for the same young lady I'm going to give her a scarf with her monogram on it and I just think this will be really really pretty. And we're going to do the same kind of thing. I'm going to wrap this fabric around this piece. Matter of fact, I would put your fabric down first, like so, and then lay the scarf on it, and then check for center. All right, check for center. I feel good about it. And then I'm going to cover it with my fabric, and then I'm just going to come to the side and start ironing that down. Now you might not think this is okay for fleece, but here's what I'm going on. I monogrammed a teddy bear one time. I used my heat, I mean, I used my iron for that and I was able to monogram the teddy bear. So I thought if I could do this on the teddy bear fur, of course I covered it so that the fur doesn't touch the ceramic or the metal plate on your iron, but it worked well on the teddy bear and I thought if it'll work there, it'll work on fleece. These items too are not things she's going to be putting in the washing machine as often as others, especially like her backpack. It may not ever see a washing machine, and so we should be okay with things like that as far as going in the dryer. But even at that, she can just hang this to dry and it should be fine. Now I feel like I'm only reaching half of it at that point, so I want to see 
and it's starting to stick. It's not stuck, and I am only getting half of the monogram, so I'm going to have to do half and then come back to the other side. By the way, this could be done easily with your home iron. No worries. You don't have to use this, but I've put this flat iron in my craft room, and I find that I don't have to set up an ironing board or anything. I can just use this little guy, and I got to tell you something. I'm not hating it. Now, the plastic cover came off real easy, which usually means it's sticking down good, but I can kind of see that it's a little bit loose. It feels loose to me. So I'm gonna go back and this time without the plastic cover, put heat straight to it through the fabric. Look at that guys, how pretty, right? And watch this, look how it moves on this fleece. It's moving just fine. I am not disappointed in this at all. I think this is fantastic and I can, see how it's going to give but it's still sticking down like when i rub across it again i'm going to do the same thing and let this cool off and then come back and test it and if i need to do any more heat i will but what a pretty scarf now it's all monogrammed and like i said look how it gives because it's such a skinny piece love it i'm not through yet here's another gift idea so this is a man's flannel shirt it belongs to my stepmother they're having flannel day at church and when she told me i thought you know i can make that super cute i think so here's what i'm going to do First, I'm going to crease, get the creases out of this flannel pocket. So I'm just putting my straightening iron in there and getting the fleece out. And let me tell you, or getting the wrinkles out. This idea was from a viewer because someone commented when I showed last time what I was doing and they said you could totally do that with a shirt pocket and they're right, so we're gonna try it. I'm gonna cut a piece of this. I use this fabric just for this purpose. So I don't mind cutting pieces up because I use it just to cover things. So now I have one just for a pocket. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is stuff this into the pocket, which I probably don't have to do since it is fabric anyway on the inside, but I'm gonna do it anyway, just to be safe. Then I have her monogram all cut and weeded. It's just gonna be so pretty, I think. It's hard to see and the plaid kind of throws you, so you have to be kind of careful when you're placing this one. So I've got that onto the pocket and now I'm gonna lay this over and we're gonna do the same thing and see how this works. Of course, you could totally do this with your iron and you could totally do this with your heat press on this pocket because you can get this into those surfaces. But I'm just like, if I don't have to plug those things up, I can just do this. You can sit down and push out presents all night long. The other cool thing about this one, I don't have to worry about only being in the pocket. So if I need to come here, I can sandwich the, the, sh the whole shirt in here. So we're fine. And there it is. I'm just going to pull this little fabric out and look how pretty that is on this pocket. And it just shimmers. What a beautiful feminine way to give a nice flannel shirt as a gift for someone. I love that. So let's look at our gifts all again together. So there is the flannel shirt. Here's our scarf we did. And then our backpack, which is really big, but I'm gonna bring it back to the screen real quick. So here's the backpack. Now I still have a little hairband I wanna do, which is just like the fleece, but it's the same process. And then what neat little gifts are these guys? I hope this helps you out with your Christmas season and trying to decide what to do. And if you have one of these machines that can cut these monograms like this, perfect, right? I think we could put the, you could do these gifts in an afternoon if you were in a real big hurry. I wanna show you this as well. I'm also gonna add a monogram to one of these bags doing the same thing. And this is a little set from Walmart, again, 488. And I think this is cute. They get this bag for cutesy and then I'm gonna add a monogram to this. So there you go. Just some ideas for some last minute Christmas shopping. And I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye.